Morning, glory, America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. Hugh Hewitt here live inside the Beltway. I'll be joined by Nikki Haley, Ambassador Haley, joining me at the bottom of the hour. But I start this hour with the United States Senator Steve Daines from the great state of Montana. Senator, uh, I keep track of Montana news because I'm still barred from the state after fishing out the Madison a couple of years ago. But I, I noticed that at Malmstrom Air Force Base, there was a drag show for the kids. That's your Air Force Base. What's going on? You keep in mind, let me put some perspective around the Malmstrom Air Force Base. There are three bases in the nation that have responsibilities for intercontinental ballistic missiles, the most massive weapons of mass destruction known to mankind. We are very proud of the fact that one-third of those missiles, 150 of those ICBMs, are in Montana. The best challenge going to have ever received came from the commander there from years ago and said, scaring the hell out of America's enemies since 1962. <laughs> It goes back to Ronald Reagan, peace through strength. It's the greatest deterrence we have to keep authoritarian, crazy leaders around the world uh, in check because they fear what the United States could do. So it's, it's an important peacekeeping mission. So as important as that mission is, we were shocked, shocked to find out. Back in June of 2021, the Malmstrom Air Force Base promoted a drag queen show for children on the base. This is nuts. I mean, our military's mission is clear, is to provide military forces to deter and win wars and protect the security of this nation. When we've got the left's woke agenda infecting the military, it's distracting the Pentagon, distracting leadership from fulfilling that mission, and it puts our national security at risk. And I'll tell you why, Hugh. You look at the recruiting goals, for example, for the Army. We were 25% below the target number in FY22. Uh, you, you, know, you, you want to recruit our best, our brightest, our toughest leaders to get into the military. And when the military is promoting this nonsense, this woke, crazy left agenda, whether well, it's drag queen shows at an Air Force base or the Air Force Academy telling people not to use terms like mom or dad, where the Navy said that conservative views, quote, are not mainstream anymore. Hugh, this is very concerning for many of us, and this is why we are speaking loudly and exposing this around what the military has been doing in some situations. Now, Senator Dane, there is always somebody who makes the decision to host an event. You've got a base commander who's in charge there, and it's probably someone below the base commander, someone in, you know, I, I've been on enough bases in my life, got son, son-in-law, and nephew on active duty. Stuff goes on on bases. Not every base commander knows. And then there's a force structure. Someone's running the ICBMs, which is different than the base commander. Have you figured out yet who decided this was a good idea? We haven't yet, but we're going to find out. Uh, we've been starting to develop this timeline around how in the world did this even happen in the first place. We've gone back. We found the Facebook posts that offered goodie bags to the first 25 children that showed up for this drag troupe called Mr. Sisters. Remember, when we talk about a drag queen show, these are men dressed up in women's clothing in front of children. The Malmstrom base on their own Facebook post said we're going to give goodie bags to the first 25 children there. I sent a letter demanding answers because this was brought up in a congressional hearing. Uh, this is, this is, it's, it's really awful. You know, you know, Hugh, I got raised by a, a U.S. Marine from Montana. You talk to the men and women who serve in Montana and have served, they can't believe it. And, and what's going on here, of course, does not represent the vast majority of those who serve. But the problem we face, this is a virus that now is starting to infect certain parts of the military. We've got to stop it. Imagine our adversaries are laughing at us. They're laughing at us to think that we, in some way, as the United States of America, with the best fighting force in the world, would be promoting this. So we're going to get to the bottom of who gave the green light. We want them held accountable. Now, Senator Dane, I don't do this topic much on the Hugh Hewitt Show because kids are going to school. And I don't want to present parents with a dilemma about what to listen to and what not to listen to. So I'm going to put this in a more vanilla uh, 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 carton right now. There are inappropriate issues for children on bases. This is one of them. Uh, and the fact that goodie bags are being, it's, it's another one. But the virus you refer to, I assume, is wokeism, not the transgendered population. The virus is the woke need to accommodate. Now, 
I teach con law. Military bases are non-public forums. There is no First Amendment deal if they say, no, we're not doing this kind of a show. So somebody made this decision. Do, you, do your Democratic colleagues want to find out? Does John Tester want to find out? No, they're, they're silent, Hugh. They're silent because they have to bend the knee, and in often cases they're leading the charge for wokeism. That's the problem we've got in Washington, and sadly, this should not be a partisan issue. It really shouldn't. No, it's a 90-10 issue. I, I just don't think any uh, everybody gets treated with dignity and decency. There is no need to try and drive a woke agenda. Senator, have you got any recruits for the Senate to tell us about yet? You got anyone in Montana? Got anyone in Nevada? Got anyone in Pennsylvania? McCormick in? Uh, what do we know? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, with opportunity and the chance to win the majority back, the best map we've seen in a decade for the United States Senate, uh, you've got a you've got a lot of interest. Uh, Dave McCormick still looking really hard at that uh, Pennsylvania race. Had a great chat with him last week. Uh, he would be a terrific recruit. Uh, I hope he gets in. Uh, in Nevada, uh, again, a great opportunity. Th- these are states that uh, we can win in 24. Um, we've, we're getting close here. I'm working with uh, Governor Lombardo there in Nevada. Remember, Governor Lombardo was Sheriff Lombardo until the election of 22. He won the governor's race there as a Republican. And we're working with Governor Lombardo and his team in Nevada to hopefully coalesce around a candidate and try to prevent a real divisive primary. I mean, one thing we learned in 22 is that when you have these divisive primaries, the Republican nominee, eventual nominee, uh, will, will come out a bit on the you know, wounded side. We want to bring consensus around a candidate where we can, and we also want to bring candidates to general elections that can win general elections. It's not enough to win a primary election. You've got to be able to appeal against the the spectrum across the Republican base as well as independent voters. If you do that, we'll win. So we're, we're encouraged by what we're seeing in Nevada and Pennsylvania. In West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice got in that race. He's leading Manchin by 14 points right now, 43 to 29. Hugh, we just pulled this yeah. year. That's one of the two ago. that you need. You need one more and preferably some, some buffer for the years down the road. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Arizona is sitting there waiting to be won. I have concerns about that race. How do you view that race? Well, Arizona, again, is very winnable. With uh, Kirsten Cinema in the independent lane, you've got Gallego, uh, the congressman, who is very, very liberal. There'll be a real clear contrast. I mean, he, there, there's, there's liberals and there's Gallego. He is way out in the left lane. Uh, there's an opportunity there in the Republican lane in a three-way race to bring that one home. We're continuing to have active conversations with candidates there, Hugh. I'll give you updates here as more evolves in Arizona. Are you trying to pull Doug Ducey into that race? You know, Doug Ducey and I, uh, of course, Governor Ducey, for those who don't follow Arizona as close as we do, uh, Doug and I were at Procter & Gamble together once upon a time. Doug's great. He went to Cold Stone Creamery, and I went to uh, the cloud computing business after we both left Procter & Gamble with now our Governor Greg Gianforti, I'm very proud of there in Montana. Uh, Doug and I have had good chats. He clearly wants to win Arizona. Uh, I don't think Doug's probably going to be a candidate in Arizona, but he's keeping a close eye on it and is a great uh, advisor in what we should do in Arizona to win that seat. Now, i got a very technical com- a question for you, Senator Daines. When I try and find somebody's website, I don't give money because of the Washington Post rules, but I just try and find it so I can post their website. I end up going to Red, uh, w- Win Red, and that's fine. Win Red is, is good. But how, is it taking the place of individual candidates? Because money given to an individual candidate goes a lot farther than money given to a PAC. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and the reason that's the case, Hugh, is when you get into the last 60 to 90 days of an election, the, the laws require that candidates get the most preferred rate when they're buying media versus a super PAC. So we need to have super PAC help, of course, but candidate dollars spend the most efficiently, sometimes 10 times more efficiently, on average two to three, sometimes four times more efficiently. We have some uh, site, in fact, it's called Senate24.com, as an example. Senate24.com, that is a site that people can go to and they can find out more um, as it relates to what's going on in the United States Senate and, and key races. Do dollars to Senate24.com go to the candidates so that they are considered an individual contribution? Correct. 
All right, that set at 24 is where you go then, because that's where you don't want to get into a pack. You want to, and win red is great, but I want the candidates to get the money because it goes 10 times as far in the last 90 days of an election than a super PAC contribution. Do not give to PACs, give to candidates. Steve Daines, always a pleasure, Senator. Uh, find out who said, yeah, that's a good idea at your Air Force base up there.